Hello and welcome to another session from us here at Microfocus. This session is focused on the history of self-healing for functional testing, specifically of when a change occurs, how does an automated test move forward? My name is Don Jackson and I'm a chief technologist here at Microfocus. So let's talk about the evolution of self-healing. So back in the 90s, we introduced the basics of self-healing, and that was a simple me mechanism of stop and report. Essentially, when executing, if the object wasn't present on the screen as it was described, we would stop the execution of the script and then prompt the user for that object that wasn't present and let them bring up the object repository and or the script to fix it. This was the first incarnation of self-healing. And it was the, to be self-aware enough that something was wrong and ask for directions from the user of what to do. This led to some users becoming much better at understanding the object properties and during creation time making much more resilient object property definitions. For example, leveraging regular expressions or customizing which properties to use on a specific object or leveraging optional or assistive properties when appropriate. And this started the skill set gap between what I would label as automation testers and then automation engineers. Automation testers build tests very fast, but then spend an increasing amount of time maintaining their scripts each successive build of the application. Whereas automation engineers take far longer to build the initial script, but spend between 50 and 75% less time maintaining their scripts with each successive build. Then in the early 2000s, we introduced what we call smart identification. Essentially, what this does is, is when the user is creating the script, we capture the properties that they've configured to be the right properties, but also capture the optional or all the other properties of the object. Then at runtime, if the object as defined by the user isn't present, we use the other optional or assistive properties to make a quote unquote, best guess of which object is correct and then move forward with the test using that best guessed object. We've enhanced this over the years to include the ability for the user to configure which properties are mandatory and assistive and weighting of the assistive properties as well. Then if the object's underlying properties change, the tool would still be able to find the object and write to the report of what was used so that the user could go back and update the properties of the object for future runs. After that, we built what we call maintenance run mode, which also would leverage that smart identification capabilities that we just talked about, in addition to providing a wizard to guide the user in resolving object identification failures, including objects that smart identification wouldn't be able to resolve. In this mode, the user executes the test, but when the object can't be identified using the defined properties, the user is prompted with a wizard to help guide resolving the issue. This mode significantly reduces the number of times that a script needs to be run when the test needs to be updated. And if the opt application object changes, successive runs don't need to occur. So here's the logic flow for the maintenance run mode. So as you can see, there's, there's a pretty complex flow and we're not gonna go through it the entire details of it, but there are multiple paths that the wizard can take you to resolve the object identification issue. Then in the early 2000s, we introduced a concept called insight mode. Essentially, the user would capture an image of the object and the tool would scan for what was being displayed to see if that image pixel by pixel existed and then act upon that. We also provided a pixel variance threshold to try to account for minor differences in display settings from one machine to the next. Now, some of the solutions out there use this method today and they call it quote unquote AI. To be clear, this is not AI. This is not artificial intelligence. So to test this, simply have an application go from light mode to dark mode. When using this method, this insight method, you have to capture a second image for a different color pa palette being used. And each time you change the theme, like for example, in SAP, where you could have six, there's over six themes that you could have, you have to capture yet another image for that different theme. Now in the next generation, we introduced the concept of called change detection mode within our packaged applications kit for BPT or business process testing. Essentially, 
This would scan the screen of not just the objects being declared to be acted against, but also looking for changes, including additions or deletions of objects on the screen, and then prompt the user to act on that and automatically update the object repository and the script itself based on the selection of the user makes in the wizard for handling the change. To my knowledge, we're still the only vendor to provide this level of capabilities where we can automatically update the script based on the change to the business process within the script. This is something that we've highlighted a number of times in the past. However, each of these first generations were addressing the symptoms of the underlying problem, that the tool couldn't identify the object the same way a human does, by the visual patterns on the screen, which leads us to where we are today with AI, or artificial intelligence. Our solution leverages computer vision an underlying and an underlying neural network in conjunction with market-leading OCR or optical character recognition engines to identify objects the same way a human does. We introduced these capabilities in June of 2019. Instead of relying on underlying object properties that frankly no human looks at when they're trying to find an object on the screen when you're doing it manually, we scan the screen looking for visual patterns to identify objects that have been trained into the neural network using supervised and unsupervised machine learning. The result of which is evidence from a story by one of our customers. They adopted our AI capabilities into their test automation when they started building their new mobile app. Their reasoning for doing that is they, they didn't want to have to build three different versions of each script to handle iOS, Android, and mobile browsers. Then for two years, they utilized this for their new application and achieved greater than 90% test automation. Then their development organization came to them and explained that they were going to change the development framework of the application. Now the lead on this asked if they were going to change the user experience flow of the application and they said no. So the lead said, go ahead and change the framework. Our test automation will still work. So the developers changed the framework, released a new version of the application, and there were zero changes that they had to make to their test automation to work with the new framework. Now, if they had been using any of the previous generations of, of self-healing, this would have absolutely crushed their test automation and they would have had to re-script or maintain all of those scripts moving forward. Keep in mind, they had to make zero changes for that. So with that, I wanna thank you for taking time to listen to the evolution of self-healing for functional test automation. Now, here's a QR code for a video that that has an introduction around AI test automation. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day. If you like the video, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you get notified when we release new videos.